One of the main areas of camera design that often actually gets forgotten about, especially in YouTube videos like my ones, because it can be quite hard to actually show on camera, is how quick the cameras are to control. And perhaps the most important area that we control the most is your autofocus area. Now, Canon, in my opinion, seem to be the brand that is spending the most time actually developing ways to control your autofocus. I mean, they've used a joystick control for ages, as have pretty much every other brand, but they've recently done some quite exciting different things, like that AF on button, for example, with a touch controller built inside, which can act in a similar fashion to a joystick, but is a bit quicker and more responsive. But perhaps the most interesting development for me is eye control autofocus, which is only available right now on their flagship mirrorless camera, the R3. And since the R3 was launched, people tend to fall into two camps when talking about the eye control autofocus feature. Those who think it's interesting, sure, but it's, it's a bit of a gimmick. And then those who think it's a massive deal. I've been lucky enough to actually use the R3 now a good few times outside of the showroom since launch. And I've definitely decided that I personally fall in the latter camp. Eye control autofocus could well be the future of camera control. It's fantastic. I really hope it's a feature that we see more of in the future. But why do I like it so much? After all, joysticks have given us more fine control than eye control does, and they've just served us well for so many years. Why do we need to change at all? Well, it's about speed. Autofocus performance has now got so fast that it rarely misses the shot at all or slows you down. So how do we improve on that? And I think if you think about what actually happens when you're taking a photo, that basic process that we all just take for granted and is built in, when a new subject pops up unexpectedly for you, you're gonna be set to one shot that you've, you've probably already got, and then you see a new opportunity over there, you decide that you want to go for it, you move the camera, you decide on your composition and your framing, you move the autofocus zone with the joystick, you actually focus, then you wait for the right moment or facial expression, and then you finally take a photo. There's quite a few steps, even if it is just all a, a built-in automatic habitual process for us all now. And most of that process in terms of time is down to us, the photographer. And most of it is spent doing the really important creative bits, like identifying the subject in the first place, so important, framing your shot, waiting for the right moment or facial expression, that to me is the art of being a photographer. That's what makes you a good photographer, not moving autofocus points around. And I haven't even touched on settings like exposure or white balance. With eye control autofocus, I rarely had to worry about where my autofocus point actually was. It was as if the camera was reading my mind and just instinctively knew where I wanted it to focus. And that's effectively because it was missing that whole step in the process where you have to move the focus point. When I found myself in finding a new framing, I was naturally looking at whatever my new subject was when I moved the camera to that framing. So at that point, I just half pressed the shutter to activate my tracking and the camera's in focus. I didn't have to think about it any more than that. Even if I want my subject on a completely different side of the frame as I did in the previous shot, it's still just as fast. And this did make a big difference to my photography. It sounds like a tiny thing, I know, but it did make a big difference. And the obvious difference is, of course, speed. Now, not in terms of how many photos I can actually take in any given amount of time, but more in terms of how quickly can I capture that moment that I've seen happening. So you spot a great moment, you have a much better chance of actually capturing it right rather than just fractionally missing the good bit, which for me happens quite a lot. The other thing I noticed that was once I got used to eye control autofocus and once I found myself actually trusting it, I was able to forget about it and just simply focus on those other elements I mentioned, my framing and the timing of my photography, they all improved. And those are the parts of photography that really matter after all. Now it's not perfect yet, it does of course have some fairly obvious limitations. Firstly, you have to calibrate it to your own eyes. So if a camera gets passed around a lot between different photographers, it can add a real extra layer of faff to just calibrate everyone, make sure the camera is set to your own calibration when you use it. And also of course you can only use it with the viewfinder. 
If you like to use the screen when you're in awkward angles or anything like that, you know, it's a technology that is of no use to you whatsoever. But perhaps the biggest limitation, in my opinion, is that it's only in the R3 right now. That's Canon's flagship mirrorless camera, and it comes, of course, with a flagship price tag. The R3 is not a camera that everyone is gonna rush out and go buy. An eye control autofocus is a technology that will benefit most people, not just high-end photographers. I'd love to see it in cameras like the R5, for example, which is perhaps more realistic, but even in Canon's entire lineup, like the R7 and R10, I think they would benefit hugely from this technology. But I imagine we're a long way off from that. I don't think this is a, a cheap technology for Canon to put into a camera after all. But for eye control autofocus to really become the future of camera control, not just one impressive feature on one camera model, I just don't think it can only exist in the flagship premium models. But for now, let me know what you think of eye control autofocus. Do you think it's the future, like I do? Or do you think it's a gimmick which will just disappear? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.